Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem Wheel Foundry VTT version 12. Not that that's hugely relevant to this particular video. Um, and we're looking at a module. We're going to be looking at Argon Combat HUD. Uh, so I'm in my test world and you can see here that I only have three modules included in my test world at the moment. And that is the Argon Combat HUD core, which you will need, and then an Argon Combat combat hud i can't say that word combat hud <laughs> for dnd 5e so if you choose to install this you will need the core and then you will need your game specific so your game engine specific um one as well to drive that now it does support a whole range of different games it supports dragon bane mutant year zero pathfinder second edition starfinder star wars 5e twilight 2000 so it doesn't support every game out there um, but it does do quite a few and it does the you know some of the common ones which is useful uh, and all this really is is it's again it's one of those ones that adds doesn't add functionality it adds simplicity accessibility uh, and it looks shiny now this happens to be another ripper one or at least uh, ripper is now curating that certainly the dnd version of it um, but it is a free one okay so no pay for this so that's all i've got in with regard to the modules installed now how does it actually work okay so let's let's start a combat let's grab all of these guys and let's start a fight so they are now all on my combat tracker now bear in mind i haven't got combat carousel tracker or anything like that installed um this mod does synergy really nicely with some of those other mods but i want to show the mod in its uh, in its more pure form, so it's really clear what this mod is doing as opposed to, you know, uh, interfering with other ones. Let me just roll all of this initiative for all of these people and begin this combat. So who goes first? Haley, you're up first. What's it done? It's done absolutely nothing. <laughs> so if you are playing with this, the first thing you do is kind of go, hang on a minute, I, I can't see anything. I've seen the pictures, I know what it's supposed to do. On the left-hand side... There is this option under the tokens one to toggle the HUD on. Okay, so just bear in mind if you are using this, your players may not be able to see it. They need to toggle that on. And boom, and there it is. All right, now I've got mine expanded, which um, more than necessary, I can minimize that down a bit if I want to. Um, and actually, I've, I've made a mistake by having all of my spells open, so it looks much busier than it needs to. Um, okay, so what have we got? As you can probably tell already, you're glancing at that as I'm wittering away, it is giving us access to all of our activities that this character might be able to do, uh, which is great. Uh, this this may be exactly what you want to have. Now, depending on the character, I've picked Haley. Well, Haley got went first in the initiative, um, and Haley's got a few more options than some others, of course. So, first of all. We've got Haley's portrait, of course, and under her portrait, so we're looking in the bottom left, if that wasn't obvious, um, we've got her hit points, her armor class, uh, and her spell DC here. Okay, so that's all nicely there for us. Just above that, we've got these weapon sets. So these first two, we've got a right and left hand, although it's left and right hand, <laughs> which it doesn't matter which way you put it. I'm left-handed, so I always put my weapon in my character's left hand. Just it looks weird if I do it the wrong way round. I've tried, like genuinely um, have tried fighting with a sword and shield right-handed and it, it's not good. <laughs> it doesn't work for me at all. Um, but we can see we've got this first couple. I know it's small, um, but we can see here we've got our mace and our shield. That's our first loadout. Next to that, we've got a hand axe and an empty hand. Now, I'm not sure if you can see. I will zoom in on this. There's a little grey dot there. I can change my loadout that Haley's using. And you just saw some of these things at the bottom here change as well. So I can go back to the other loadout. Boom. And I can switch between them. Now there's three different loadouts. So you might have a character that uses a two-handed weapon. But they have a backup of a sword and a shield. Uh, but they've also got a range set up where they get their bow out. I can't imagine many characters have many more setups than that um, so three for most people is going to be perfectly adequate 
so that's really good. We can just switch between those. Now moving along slightly, there is a small dice icon. So we're still in the bottom left hand corner um, where we can use roll initiative directly from here, which is great. And also next to that, a suitcase icon, which opens our actual character sheet if we need it to. Next to that, we've got a little minimize, so we can just shrink that down. That doesn't work particularly well for Haley because I've got all of her spells open. But let me show you the next thing just above to the right of Haley's portrait. If I hover that direction, a little cog icon comes up. And this allows individual players to say, well, do I want all spells? Do I want only prepared spells? For most people, auto detect is fine. And look at that. It's just shrunk these spells down to be less intrusive on the screen. I can still access all of her spells anyway. I can still go to her character sheet, you know. Um, for wizards and things, they're only going to, you know, have it on prepared spells. This is what you've got access to. That's it. Um, obviously, for clerics, they generally have access to a lot more in any one go. So it's useful there that you can change that if you want to. All right, so and sticking in the bottom left hand corner, you can see we've got these blue, uh, these blue dots here. And at the bottom, it says six and then six. This is your movement, how much movement you've got left on this character for this round. So remember, we are, we are in combat here. So if I take Haley and I'm, I'm going to move her, you watch this column uh, next to her portrait. It went down by one blue square. And our blue number has changed to five out of six because she's moved. It's now four out of six. It's now three out of six. So it's going to track how much movement they've got, which is really useful if they're going to move a bit, do an action, move a bit. So by doing this, um, we can easily track. So it's really useful for new players in particular. They want to track that stuff. Um, of course, they might find this slightly overwhelming, but they'll very quickly get used to it. And again, First level fighters are going to have fewer options on here than, you know, a 12th level wizard or, a, you know, paladins that have got, you know, all sorts of things going on. OK, so let's talk about this, um, this major bar at the bottom here. So you can see this is broken down into sections of action, bonus action, reactions, special and pass. So at any time, this player can choose to click pass and end their turn and it will move on to the next player. Any reaction stuff they've got available is here, including any features they may have. You can click on features. That brings up for Haley Shield Mastery Evasion. Under bonus action, yes, I might have some spells. What spells can be cast as a bonus action? Well, oddly enough, it's only going to give me a very small selection there. But again, I've got my shield here that Haley can use. Um, as part of her, uh, no, she doesn't got bonus action with that. That's fine. But she has got this feature, which is her shield master shove. So that's one of the things that Haley likes to do. Is she's got that. She likes to shove them to the ground where she then gets advantage because they're prone and then beat their snot out of them with her mace. That's her raison d'etre. Because, <laughs> you know, everybody's got to have a style, right? Uh, on the left one here, which is the full actions, as you would expect, you can see a lot more things. So we've got her mace here. We've got um, her ability to disengage or dodge, cast a spell. And again, if we click cast a spell, it's going to bring up the spells that she can cast. And I can click that to hide it again to keep it neat. So I don't need to have her spells open all the time. I can click my ready action, hide, dash, shove, use an item. And I've got my special abilities of channel, um, channel divinity for turning undead or preserve life. Now you'll see that those are greyed out because while she's got them, um, she's used them already. So they're still there, but she can't actually activate them. Uh, and if I click on it, it will indeed ask me to confirm using it, even though we know she shouldn't be able to. All right, now I'm going to bring up the, uh, the text box here and just clear that chat. All right, so... That seems all quite straightforward, but how do these things actually work? So let's click on a spell. So Haley's going to use her action. She's going to cast a spell, uh, and she can choose any of these she likes. Let's go with uh, let's go with command. Uh, nothing has happened except look at my cursor, which is just under Haley's portrait. It says zero out of one targets. I hadn't targeted any creature before saying I want to cast that spell. 
So what it's doing is saying, well, you, nothing's going to happen until you choose that target. So this is a really nice prompt to remind people about targeting and things. Let's, uh, we know it won't work on a zombie, but let's pick that zombie. I'm going to click on it to say that's the one I want to target. Now it's going to confirm casting that spell. Yes, it says I've got no slots, but whatever. I'm going to, oh, it won't let me do it. Of course it won't. I'm going to say no to consume spell slot. Um, so now I've confirmed the target and that I'm doing it. We've got the chat top right in the chat box here. We've got the normal game base game foundry um, generated. Uh, we've got the description of the spell and we've got the fact that, oh yeah, we need to make the wisdom saving throw, etc. Okay, so again, we've got no other automation. This is purely the HUD itself. But if we had that, whether it's MIDI QOL or any other automations, this does play into that very nicely. So uh, we will be doing a, another... Um, as some of the version 12 mods are coming up to speed and we're getting there, we're going to be doing another automated video, automating all of our combat and stuff just so that we can have a play. Because I know some people really like that. I only like to automate to a certain extent. Anything that makes my life as the DM easier, I'm happy. <laughs> I would like that, thank you. Uh, anything that's going to take away from my players rolling dice, I don't want. Okay, Because I want them to play the game as well as tell the story. So... I don't want to, I personally don't want to rob them of that. But we will look at that again. Okay, so we've been able to do that. Brilliant. Now, of course, Haley's used her action, but uh, let's try another one. If, if we click on Mace, so again, I've got nothing targeted. It's going to do exactly the same thing and say, well, who are, you, who are you trying to hit? You've got to pick a target. Let's pick this zombie. And I get my attack that I can make my normal attack rolls. Again, all of the base foundry D, D stuff now is going on so the combat hud is just letting me see what i can do what is an action what's a bonus action a reaction etc uh, and allowing me quick access to be able to do that okay so of course assuming that Haley has infinite actions and movement i can if i want to i can change my loadout uh, and of course, my shield's gone because I don't have a shield in this loadout, but I do have my hand axe, so I can attack with that instead. So it's really, really nice from that point of view. If I click my spells, I can hide that again and keep it a bit neater. All right, Haley, come on, that's enough. You've you've had enough of your go. Next turn happens to be Sorryman. So when we click on Sorryman, of course, he's going to have a different set of things. I haven't put anything in his loadout. Well, that's a mistake, isn't it? So. Let's open his character sheet by clicking that little suitcase icon. And now I can say, well, actually, what is his loadout? So he's quarter staff. Um, but he's also, I've got to think about hand axes, haven't I? Hand axe is going to be part of his second loadout. So again, let me clear the chat just to get rid of that. So again, Sorryman has the actions that are relevant to him. Um, it's telling me he's got a movement speed. He's got eight squares. Why? Why is that? What have I, have I done something silly with his movement? I might have done because I play with these characters quite a lot, <laughs> and I fiddle with them for various reasons. Um, he's got a walk speed of of forty, um, so obviously that's giving him the eight rather than the six. That's why. So you can see it's pulling directly from that character sheet. He's got a move speed of forty, therefore eight squares based on the fact that they're five by five. So yeah, that, that was a little bit concerning, but it's 100% correct, okay? So it's very useful from that point of view. And of course I can move Sorryman as well, same as I did with Haley, and that number goes down to show that. And again, you know, assuming I've got nobody targeted, Sorryman can come in and attempt to do his quarter staff. Um, so we can, uh, we can click that, and again, it's gonna to ask to confirm targets. We can hit this one. We can make our attack roll as normal. Boom, yes, we hit that, and then we can do our damage. Now, we've only got that in one slot, but he does use his quarterstaff two-handed, so we can do that and then apply that damage. So that's, again, that's all core function for us. We've applied that damage, the zombie's taken that damage. Lovely. It's just a, a very fancy, but it is just a shortcut, uh, which is great. Cast spells... Yeah, Sorryman has some spells, so obviously it's not bringing up the same ones as Haley. It's only bringing up the ones that he needs. He's got his use feature, 
Tavern Brawler Strike is in there. Lovely jubbly. Use item. He's got Potion of Healing. He's got Helm of Comprehend Languages. So it's giving me those options. Um, don't worry about Chromatic Bolero. Um, I was looking at something and, and testing building that for somebody who was having... A, a, one of our viewers was having a couple of issues setting up a, 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 a character-specific ability for their bard. Um, and something wasn't quite working. I was playing around with that and I, I forgot that I actually left Sorryman with um, this, <laughs> this this new character trait of Chromatic Bolero. <laughs> he hasn't really got it. Um, but one of his bonus actions, of course, he use features. He's got his Tavern Brawler Grapple, um, but he's also got his Rage, so he can use his Rage if he wants to. Um, I'm just checking. I should apply it to him. Yes, good. So it's applied his Rage for him, which is great. Uh, as a reaction, he's got his quarter staff, and again, he can end his turn by clicking on that, and it's just instantly moved over to the boar's go. Now, from the DM's point of view, oh, my poor boar is dead. <laughs> I didn't realise my boar was dead. <laughs> Give it some hit points. Raise life. <laughs> um, so again, for the DM, when I'm controlling the enemy monsters, I've got the same. I've got the same loadout if I need it. I've got the same action and reactions and specials. So uh, Relentless is a special feature that the boar gets. But I've got my tusk attack. So let's make sure I don't attack that. So by clicking on my tusk attack, again, it's going to say, well, hang on a minute, you haven't got a target selected. Pick somebody. We're going to pick Sorryman. Attack Sorryman. Yeah, enjoy that, will you? And you failed to hit, um, which is lovely. Good job. So it works for the players and it works for the DMs. Now, whether it's something that you want to use for your group, obviously, is entirely up to you. But it, it and again, you could argue that this is starting to lean towards the making it a computer game rather than a role playing game. Um, that's not a good thing or a bad thing. That's perfectly, you know, either way that you want to go with your games is up to you. As long as you're happy and your players are happy, that's the only thing that matters. Um, I personally like to keep the tabletop RPG feel as much as possible. But this is really tempting for me because, especially with new players, it really does kind of lay things out for them of exactly what they can and can't do. And if they have come from playing computer games and things, they'll be more used to seeing something along like this HUD kind of things. Um, and that might make them more comfortable. They haven't got to go to their character sheet and go, oh, I'm overwhelmed by everything. It's like, no, nope, everything's set up. These are your choices. This is what you can do. Pick something from your actions. Pick something from your, uh, well, from your bonus action if, if you've got them. The board doesn't get them. Um, you might do something like that. Yeah, so you might find that nice. So before we end this video, let's uh, end that combat and clear that off. Uh, and again, I can obviously toggle off the combat HUD whenever I like. Uh, before we do that, let's go and have a look at some of the settings, because there's actually quite a few settings for these. So first of all, let's look at the core. Um, now, a lot of these you won't want to, you won't need to play with, or you'll play with it once and then your job done. But you can customise the themes up here. So by clicking on this, We've got this kind of grey kind of background, but you can change it. So the portrait colours, if you want to, change that background colour and make it, you know, make it really dark. Um, we can make the text colour, I don't know, horrific green. Uh, we can change the border colour and make it blue. So we can do all of those things if we want to uh, and change any of these bits. Um, so I've done that on the portrait. Main actor colours, we can change those as well if we want to. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so you can see you can do it by the bonus action bits, you can do it by the free action, the reactions, etc. You can change any of those. I thought I changed that to black. Oh, I was, that was on the portrait one, that's why. <laughs> Silly boy. If I save changes, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, we've now changed those colours. Um, and fit that theme. So you can change it to however you want. You might, for example, want your main action colours um, to be, let's say, let's say we make that background green for our main actions. Um, for our bonus actions, we want to change that background colour to, uh, I don't know, a blue. 
that really kind of pale blue um, and we might want to change our reactions background color to really red or something like that if we save changes uh, you can see that that's going to change that let's uh, let's pick a different character uh, you can see that's going to change the various bits for us and make it a bit more obvious what's a what's an action what's a bonus action or, or things like that if that's what we want to do we can do that so you can fiddle with it as much as you like I've chosen horrific colors um, now bearing in mind I'm there is um, there is some ones already kind of built in here so you might find if we go, let's pick helium see what that looks like nice orangey one yeah that's nice your players can also come in and do this neon if that's what they want to do um, and they can they can pick whatever they particularly want to, want to have theirs look like absolutely no problem uh, give me my save button thank you very much there we go but under that there is an option that says theme mode it defaults to say client, which means each player can change their theme, their colours to however they want. But you can, as a DM, set it to world, which means what you set it as is what is going to be. So again, if you wanted to change those colours to say, wait, you do a, a green thing action, then you do an orange thing bonus action, um, and then you have your other things like reaction, etc., and you want to color code those specifically and you want them to be the same for everybody you can do that so you can also see there's lots of other options here we're not going to go through or every single option because there is quite a few um, but things like 3d canvas rangefinder well we're not using 3d canvas so we don't need to worry about that that target picker when we go to do an action that requires a target and we haven't got one that's by default is on but you can turn it off if you want you can also Op, um, activate this option which means if something's targeted when you press your attack it will untarget everything and then ask you to confirm the new target um, you might find that that's useful if you've got players who keep it's like oh no hang on a minute oh I've clicked attack but I hadn't changed which target I wanted I forgot to set new target um, it's like well it's not my fault you uh, decided to attack the druid in the village rather than attack the bugbear that was attacking him you know that's a, a player error but do you want to punish them for that because the actual character wouldn't be going making that mistake um, by having that it would clear that target you're not going to accidentally hit the druid because it forces them to select their new target each time that might be useful uh, open on combat start so do you remember right at the beginning and i had to toggle it on or off well you can just say hey open it anyway as soon as we start combat you open that up okay so it just straight away it's part of combat your combat carousel comes on if you're using that your combat hud comes up if you're using that uh, and it turns it from none of those things active to da -da -da. we're now into that combat setup yeah if you like do it um, a few other things here you can change things like the scales um, always on so if you don't want your hud you know if you want your hud on all of the time regardless of whether you're in combat you can do that You've got some position stuff here so you can move it around hide the macro bar and player list um, you know player details on the bottom you know things like this uh, you can do all of that if you want to change those change the scale of the tool tips uh, obviously I've left all of my stuff on default fade out to fade out the HUD after not mouse overing for five seconds so it will just fade into the background it's still there you just mouse over it again um, but you might find that that's nice just to stop cluttering up the screen quite so much just fade it out and there's some delays and things you can do around that that's all the core stuff now within the individual game system um, version of the combat HUD obviously these will be different and there's not that many options show weapons in the use item section uh, and the idea is if, if you don't have enough slots here <laughs> enough of those kind of um, loadouts you can tick that if you want to uh, and then you've got more options you can use there I personally don't wouldn't wouldn't think I would ever use that show class actions so you can turn them off you know so uh, um, Haley had things like you know channel divinity and stuff it's a that's a class action you can turn that off so it doesn't show up uh, condensing them so if you remember when we when we were on Haley, boom okay 
these class actions see they're quite small here they're not giant great big squares like the others they're a bit smaller so it's condensed them down a bit which is great um, there's also a macro um, panel that you can show or not show and of course auto equipped items when you switch sets well yeah that's that's very useful again on by default um, no I'm not going to reset don't need to thank you very much so that's just that's it that's kind of what it does so I'm just got the I've got the wiki open of course because it is a, a ripper one you can find all of these by going to uh, wiki.theripper93.com and you can see all of the bits he's got for that just having a quick scan make sure I've not missed anything particularly uh, important that I need to tell you about because that's pretty much everything on there um, I've not missed anything I've started trying to get better at doing that because <laughs> occasionally people go, Dory, you've missed this bit. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's quite important. Um, yeah, I, some, I know some of you already use this. If you're already using it, you know, do, is there any, why are you using it? What's the really good, what's the really good about it for your group? And if you're, if you used to use it and stop, why? You know, what are the drawbacks? Do you find, do you find it just takes up too much real estate? Do you find it, it changes the way, um, the game works, not the way it works, but the way it flows for your group. Um, yeah, just let, let us know who's using it, what you think, why do you use it. That'd be really, really useful because obviously, you know, some people are not using it and go, oh, I hadn't thought about how much it supports this particular type of play or something like that. All right, I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to let you crack on and get on with, you know, doing your own thing and running your own games and sorting them out. Um, Again, just a reminder, this is the uh, Argon Combat HUD. Take care, everyone. I will see you in the next one.